forward, you follow me. If I hesitate, push me. If they, I am a kill me, avenge me. If I am a traitor, you kill me. Gangsters, cops, and politicians get ready to rock. We're on a mission. Each one of us shares our own vision. Saludos, it's your host, Gabe Morales, returning back again for our series on West Familia members over the past six decades or so. As you know, I took a brief pause for the cause to put out a few videos that have been on the back burner. I know a lot of my listeners are tuned in for the prison game genre content, and I appreciate your patience while I put together some of those videos. As you know, the purpose of this channel is to cover interesting and controversial subjects in the gang and crime world, the police and corrections field, and political and social change arena. And so while I put out a lot of prison and street gang videos, that is not the only focus of this channel. Today, I'll start off with Alberto Bird Lares Guzman. He was called that because he was long and lanky like a bird. He was born in 1966, and I show already active with the Northern Structure by at least by the time he was in his mid-20s. He did his first CDC turn under H. 4937 in 1991, and I show was paroled in December of 1996. He set out to make a big name for himself out on the streets of Salinas and put in work for his barrio, Salinas East Market. I understand that he was involved in the homicide of Sal Castaneda, which I've covered in several videos. Evidently, Sal didn't want to take out his brother Pablo, who had become a problem for the NF, and so they took out Sal. This is often the choice that a lot of these guys have when they get caught up in that life, either kill or be killed. He was returned to Pelican Bay in the year 2000 and indicted on the 2001 RICO case, where the Sal Castaneda homicide was mentioned. I show he also was locked up on a robbery beef, and I believe was at Pelican Bay from the year 2000 to 2003, except for the time when he was out to Fort. I show he ended up getting BOP number 02840-748. And he did time in the feds for multiple charges he committed on behalf of the NF. I show that he did some time at Allenwood in the year 2010 and then was released at the end of 2010. When he was released in 2010, he hooked up with Henry Cervantes, who faced some arson and murder charges while he was out in the street. I then understand he was involved in the homicide of Martin Kung Fu Chacon in August 2012 and was indicted on another RICO case in 2013 and given life and has been housed at the ADX for at least the last few years. There was Arturo, a.k.a. Tudi, a.k.a. T-Bone, La Soya. I show that he was involved in the NF in the early 1970s under B number 38610. He ended up rising to the rank of captain in the bobble car by the mid-1970s, and I show was housed at CTF Soledad in 1976. He paroled in 1977, but was arrested in Fresno in January 1978. As you recall, the late 1970s was the time frame when the Babo Sosa Death Row Joe car were facing impeachment by the Black Bob Brown Bob car. And I have some information that T-Bone was hit in 1978 and seriously wounded but not killed. Understand that he ended up getting popped on a new B number, 97284, when they caught him slipping. And he was killed on October 10, 1981, allegedly by Corny Tristan and Poppy Reyna. It is believed that Black Bob Vasquez ordered T-Bone's killing via NF member Babo Montelongo. There was Raymond Lasoya from Chole, which is Soledad. 
I showed that he was in the Youth Authority in 1977, but paroled by 1978. He got popped for assault with a deadly weapon in 1982 and a burglary in 71986, whereby he was given D number 71023. I showed that he had multiple parole violations through the late 1980s through early 90s. Then he was convicted of a theft charge in 1995, whereby he was given J number 78357. I showed he paroled at the end of 1996 and had multiple parole violations after that, but I lost track of him after the year 2004. There was Stephen Porky Lent out of Eastside Daily City. I showed that he was Nuestra Raza in the early 1990s under J number 6706. I believe he was out on the streets by 1994 and continued to put in work until he was granted admission to the Nuestra Familia. And that Chuku Guillen put him on no good status in 2000. And I heard a rumor that he was killed in 2004. If anybody can confirm that, I'd appreciate it. As I've said many times, way too many families have been negatively affected in many ways by the gang lifestyle. There was Christian Lepe, who I believe was out of ISA, and he was incarcerated in the year 2017 with A number Y8602. He was a youngster and considered an uh, insoldado or at least an associate, but evidently he displeased the homies because he was killed at High Desert State Prison on February 1st, 2021. There was Mousy Von Lerme, who was out of Morgan Hill. This is a very interesting individual. He was involved with the Northern Structure in the very early days, shortly after the XIV bonds were written. As you know, Brown Bob Viramontes had a hand in writing the bonds. Brown Bob was most familiar, but Mousy was not. And Brown Bob stated that he didn't want Mousy to be NF. He wanted him to stay as a Northern Structure ambassador to help get the word out the young Norteños entering CDC yards that there now was a format for them to follow so they could survive since they're greatly outnumbered by the Sureños, which did not have any formal written rules, but like the Mexican Mafia had some generally accepted rules. Understand that his brother-in-law was Matt Rocha of the Notorious Rocha family, who later on became a very influential NF member until very recently. He was housed at San Quentin in 1989 under E numbers in Edward 24111, and I understand was validated as being Northern Structure in 1997, when in all actuality, he was in a Northern Structure to Maestro, if not an undercover NF. Understand that he was off that E number by the late 1990s, then came back shortly under A number as an apple, H as in Henry, 3428, and remained loyal to the Norteño cause until he died recently in June of 2023. There was Donald Sleepy Lewis out of the Hayward car. This was another individual I had on Sea Yard in the early 1990s, under C number 14009. I recall doing a cell search on Sleepy one time, and I saw a lot of pictures of the Escovedo family, who were very influential in Latino music. Her father and uncles played with Santana and other bands like Azteca, Malo, etc. in the Bay Area. And so I asked him about it, and he told me that he was related to them. I'm not sure by blood or by marriage, but there were multiple pictures of the Escovales, including Sheila backstage in her dressing room. Don't get excited, guys. She was fully dressed. I also recall seeing Pete Escovedo when he performed at Jazz Alley in Seattle, and Sheila performed with him playing the drums. And when he got to introducing her, he clowned her, saying, This is my daughter, Sheila. She used to play with Prince when she was making that large money. Now she's playing with me, making that short money. By the way, Sheila, where's the rent? And she was kind of embarrassed and shook her head with smiles. I told my wife about Sleepy at Folsom, and she just so happened to pass the dressing room on break and said, Hey, Sheila. And her mom stepped right in front of her like a bodyguard. And Sheila looked at my wife like, What? I owe you money? It was kind of funny. My wife <laughs> And my wife backed up, not knowing really what to say or what to do. Those are a couple true funny stories dealing with the Escovea family and Donald Sleepy Lewis. Understand that he was paroled in December 1996, but then returned to Pelican Bay Shoe in 2012 when I lost track of him. There was an Enrique Loaiza, known as Ricky from San Diego. As you remember in the early days through the mid-1970s, there were still quite a few NF members from Southern California. Ricky was affiliated with the NF in the mid-1970s under B number. 59487. And understand he murdered an individual named Randy Roth on June 9, 1975 at DBI. Evidently, he was not charged with that crime because I showed that he paroled in March of 1976. And 
as far as I know, dropped out of the NF. There was Raymond Gato Loera out of ISA. He was Northern Structure in the early 1990s under H number 22217. And I understand was very close to Sonny Trujillo, who, as far as I know, was the artist, or at least one of the artists, that drew up the original Nuestra Raza symbol of an eagle with a knife in his beak and a red paño bandana in one town and the other town holding the 14 bonds. And I'm unsure what happened to him after he got released on that H number, I believe in the late 1990s. There was Martin, a.k.a. Flaco, a.k.a. Joker Lomas, who was out of San Ho. I showed that he was Northern Structure in the mid-1980s, and he was another individual I had at C facility in the early 90s, under C number. 58984. Understand that he was very close to Eric Duarte, who later fell out of favor of the NF. And he was also close to Benjamin Creeper Escobar, all from San Ho. I show that he was released in 1994, about a year after I left working at New Folsom, and eventually was branded as being no good. There was Richard Ricardo London out of San Francisco. Here's another interesting individual. I understand that he was never an NF, but was more like an advisor. San Francisco, as many of you know, is very political, even to this day. And one of the epicenters of San Francisco revolutionary groups is the Mission District. I show that London was locked up in CDC in the 1970s with B number 27816. And like I said, never became an NF member, but was an close associate. Understand that he was housed at DVI in 1978 when that prison was an epicenter of NF activity. Now, I've heard some people talk about the Raso Nida, and somehow London's name has been associated with that group. There is a political party in Texas called Raso Nida, and Raso Nida, or United Race, or United Latinos, was a big theme in San Francisco, Galifas, all over the Southwest. Indeed, even outside of it. I know because at this time, I was very much caught up with revolutionary thought in the 1970s when I worked at El Centro de la Raza. But in all the documents I've ever seen, in all the sea files, in all the debriefs that I've read, I've never heard about this group called Raza Unida. There was a group that Danilo Bebe Lemendez of Los Siete fame out of San Francisco wanted to start, but that group was called Nuestra Cosa Latino, and I don't believe they ever considered the, the name Nuestra Raza. So like I said, I'm not sure where they ever got that idea. Also, Babu Sosa started the 14 Rules for the Northern Warrior, which was an amendment to the NF Constitution in the 1970s. But that never mentions Raza Unida either. As I stated in the XIV Bonds video, the group Nuestra Raza, also known as the Northern Structure, was implemented in the early 1980s at Folsom 4A and sent out to the yards, including including DVI. Multiple individuals were involved in that, as I stated in multiple previous episodes. I understand he was housed at Corcoran in 1988, shortly after it opened, and disassociated himself totally from any NF in Northern Structure politics. I understand he was housed at Solano in 1996, and then housed at Mule Creek State Prison in 2012. But I show was currently not in custody. And so, I'll have to stop right there, but don't worry, we'll be back soon to give you more information on the West Familia members over the past six decades or so. This has been Gabe Morales for Gangsters, Cops, and Politicians. If I go forward, follow me. If I hesitate, push me. If they, I am a kill me, avenge me. If I am a traitor, kill me. Gangsters, Cops, and Politicians, get ready to rock. We're on a mission. Each one of us shares our own vision.